Hey everyone, so this talk's on YZNM. It's a small library that I wrote. It's almost embarrassingly short by lines of code. So I know what already you're all thinking. Really, another one, a YZNM library or a SmartEnum library. This is like the C++ equivalent of a to-do app, right? There's like four million of them on the App Store. Uh, but probably kind of okay. like to-do apps, right. there's a lot of issues with them. If you just, actually if you Google search for SmartEnum, the first like eight hits are random gists and stack overflow questions. It's not exactly a library you would actually want to use uh, until you finally come to like a real library. So it, it's kind of, it's not really a solved problem. Um, so what is the problem? So we have an enum, we'd like to be able to turn it into a string. We'd like to turn strings back into our enums. We'd like to iterate over them and know how many there are. That's basically it, right? Very useful <coughs> and not, uh, you know, not, not that easy to find a library that does all that properly. And a lot of the libraries you'll find have all kinds of issues. Uh, some of them use X macros. Some of them assume that all the enums are like the values go from zero, one, two, like all kinds of different problems. A lot of them don't declare enums. They declare classes that try to behave like enums. So we don't have reflection. So obviously the solution is not going to be pretty no matter what. So if you take stock of your options, you know, if you manually generate code, that's bug prone. If you automatically generate code, that's in your build system. So we'll just use macros, also ugly. So here's what the API looks like. You're declaring an enum. You're explicitly setting one of the values. Looks pretty, you know, whatever. Uh, here's how you would iterate. So y is enum colon colon range. You throw in the name of your enumerator. Also pretty straightforward. Uh, converting, again, you have two string, you throw it in, a string comes out. If you have a string, you throw the string in, and what comes out is actually an optional, because if no enum has the right string, then you'll get an empty optional. And so there's no, uh, if you don't use exceptions, for example, you don't have to worry. Uh, if you're doing metaprogramming, like if you have a logger, you might want to have the logger log y enum differently, because you know exactly how to log it, right, because you have all the strings. So you have a type trait, so it supports that, no problem. So I'll give a very sort of quick explanation of, of how it works. There's a lot of different approaches you could use. Most of them have kind of issues. Uh, here's the approach here. So when you do this macro, what comes out, first of all, an actual enum comes out. And like I said, a lot of the libraries don't actually declare enum. Uh, the second thing that happens is it throws in a couple of detail functions and the detail functions function basically takes this tag type. Uh, and the tag type's templated on the enum, so it's found by ADL. It's all pretty straightforward. There's nothing like very complicated here. Uh, but it does work. I mean, so there's that. Working is good. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna tell you why it's good, uh, I think. So first, it supports 11, 14, and 17. Uh, and it supports each one of these idiomatically. So for instance, if you're using 14, you get template variables. You don't have to do the na nasty colon colon value. Uh, if you're using 17, it works with string view and it works with std optional. Uh, I already talked before about declaring an actual enum. It supports, as far as I know, all the functionality. So you saw already in a slide that I gave an explicit value to one enumerator. You can also explicitly declare the storage. You could leave it implicit. Uh, it works at namespace scope, it works at class scope, um, pretty much any of the things you want to do, enum and enum class, obviously. Um, you can also adapt uh, third-party enums. This is like an important feature, but one that's kind of omitted. Um, everything's const expert if you do it with 14 or later, so absolutely everything. Uh, and also important is that if you do the two-string conversion, for example, it actually uses a switch case, a lot of libraries they do all kinds of not so nice workarounds, uh, either linear search, which is totally unnecessary because you can usually get really good assembly from switch case. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right.